Good morning, it's great to see you. How are you doing today? And I'm back, I'm back here, brewing again. I've been away down south for a few months, so I haven't been able to brew, but I have been making a lot of other content along with Dee. Our patrons will know the nature of this content and it's, you will love the story we're going to be telling you when we can bring it to you. So I have been working on videos, but just not homebrew related. Anyway, I've got a great wine that we're going to be making today. Today's wine recipe is a wine I love to make, and I've been meaning to bring this recipe to you for a while. And that is beetroot wine. It's one of my favourite wines to make this time of year, autumn into winter. So let's get on and get this wine brewed up. For this beetroot wine, you're going to need about two kilograms of beetroots. It does not matter if they are young, big, old, tough, sweet, tender, whatever variety or type or age of beetroot you have available to you, they will work really well. So first thing you want to do with your beetroots is scrub off all the dirt around them. They're all nice and clean, but you do not want to peel them. Once you've scrubbed and cleaned your two kilograms of beetroot, you want to take off the bottom bit and the top bit. Or is that the top bit? Is that the bottom bit? Top and tail them anyway, and then just chop them into small little chunks. Since I've been away, my shipping container, my brewing room, my studio, has been repurposed. And, oh wow, wait until you see that down the line. You'll love it. Once you've diced up your rhubarb, you want to put them into a big saucepan. Just shove them in, straight in. Big saucepan, in they go, come on. And then once your beetroot chunks are inside your saucepan, you want to pour over about two litres of boiling water, bring the beetroot to the boil, and then let simmer for about a quarter of an hour or so. You want all that flavour, all that juice, all that colour, that wonderful red beetroot colour, to come out of the beetroot and into the juice, which you'll then turn into wine. So kettle on and pour your water over your, into your, so, so grab yourself your kettle and pour the boiling water into the saucepan and boil. The great thing is you can then use the beetroot to make soup or into a pie or into well, what, however you want to use the beetroot, you have the beetroot to eat. Either the wine will be free or the beetroot will be free. Dual purpose, love it. So now, whilst that's boiling away, go grab yourself some sugar and then we'll prepare that element. Beetroot wine is robust. It's a firm, dark, red, rich, robust drink. So I like to add quite a bit of sugar to it to bring out the alcohol content, which the flavour can carry through, and also the sweetness. So it's going to be a dark, rich, sipping drink. So I personally like to use between 1.25 and 1.5 kilograms of sugar. That will offer you a really strong, good, dark, rich, sweet drink without it being over the top sweet sweet. If you're not going to use the beetroot for a soup or a savoury dish, you can add all of your sugar straight into that saucepan with the beetroot in. But I'm going to be reusing the beetroot for dinner tonight, so I'm going to be dissolving my sugar in a separate saucepan. So I'm going to pour in one and a half kilograms into a separate saucepan, dissolve it away with boiling water. Give it a stir. Awesome! And just get all of your sugar dissolved into that boiling water. Beetroot wine is well known for losing that rich dark red colour over time. So you want to ideally be using a dark coloured demijohn. If you only have the clear transparent white ones, wrap some brown paper or newspaper around the demijohn. Try and keep the light away from this red rhubarb beetroot. It's beetroot, yeah. Try and keep the light away from the beetroot wine as much as you can because the colour, because the light will zap out that lovely dark red and turn it into a mottled brown near type of colour. So keep the light away. It's the enemy when it comes down to beetroot wine. So now we want to pour that sugar solution into your dark coloured or wrapped up in newspaper demijohn. Nice and easy. Use a funnel, pour it in without making too much of a mess, I hope. And then you're nearly, nearly ready to pour the beetroot juice into the demijohn on top of that sugar. Awesome. Oh, that smells divine. So strain out all the pieces of beetroot, 
from your boiling water with the juice and colour and put them into a separate saucepan to either compost or eat later on in the night. Awesome. So we feature it soup for dinner, I think. And this juice is looking divine. It's dark, rich, bright red, beetroot, blood red. Awesome. And then you're ready to pour that lovely juice into your demijohn through a funnel. Happy days. I have left some headspace in the demijohn, ready for when I add the yeast. Just in case it starts bubbling up and going a bit mental with the yeast and the activity. So now you want to let your demijohn and the liquid cool down to about room temperature and then we will add the yeast. So I'll be back in a minute now with you. Well hey, once your liquid is suitably cool, you want to be adding your yeast. I'm using a mead yeast by Cross My Loof, but you can use any general purpose wine yeast for this wine. It does not make a great deal of difference if you use a general purpose or a mead or whatever type of yeast you have available use it, it does not really matter. I just prefer the mead yeast because I find it adds a more robust flavour to the beetroots and it brings up that alcohol flavour without any burn behind it. So it's really, really, well for me, it's my personal preference. But you use whichever type of yeast you fancy. So just sprinkle in your yeast into the demijohn. And if you want to add some yeast nutrients as well, do so but I know that Cross My Loof do add nutrients to their yeast, specifically designed to work with the yeast in question. I love the smell of yeast. What about you? Do you? I do. Anyway, sprinkle in and nearly job done. And then you simply want to add an airlock to that and let it stand, let it start fermenting, start bubbling away and becoming awesome. In a few days time, you'll want to top up the liquid so it's all the way to the top of the neck of the demijohn. I personally will add some more beetroot juice to this just to preserve the colour and the flavour so I'm not diluting it. So I'll buy a few more rhubarb. So I'll buy a few more beetroots, boil them up, same manner and just top up the juice. Fantastic stuff. This wine will take a while to mature. It should be ready by next autumn or winter. So give it six, eight, ten months or so to mature. And it will be a wonderful, wonderful autumnal drink for you to drink. Make more than you think you don't want to drink yourself because it does make fantastic gifts to give to people. And you know, everyone's going to want a bottle of this stuff when they come and visit you. So make a heap of it. Anyway, it's been great seeing you again. And I'll keep you updated with other developments, fun and games that is. We have so much to tell you and we're going to tell you everything in all the details when we legally can. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Anyway, you have fun now. I'll see you soon and keep on brewing.